Shout out our sponsors, GW Competitions. They run regular draws for you to win different prizes from cash to Rolexes to cars and all sorts. It's all legit and the draw is run through the Google number generator. And the prize is delivered the next day and if it's cash, it's transferred the same day. The draws are run on Facebook Live and Instagram Live. And you've got to be in it to win it. again big ego media entertainment another podcast today we've got a special guest i know i say this all the time but this one's a special guest because this is a long time friend from like my teen years none other than mr young Mar. what's going oh, on bro my brother, you good come on man you, come you had me waiting here today man you had me waiting <laughs> my bad my bad my bad so as you know these interviews will always go from the very get go we start from where it all begins so where are you from where was you born let's start with that cool I'm from Wolf Road, mm. obviously down the road from where you are. Um, I was born in Owlsbury Estate. Okay. Actually, Moby House, Old Kent Road. Okay. We lived there for a short period of time. And then we moved to Owlsbury. Okay. Um, Taplow. Did nursery up to primary school there. Then moved up to the other side of Wolf Road, which is Brandon. Okay. I mean, growing up in Brandon, how, how was that for you? Because now it's, it's, it's not changed. I mean, the state is still the same, but like the reputation of Brandon has sort of changed a bit more. So what, what do you remember as the, the positive stuff growing up in Brandon? Well, I'll, see, I'll be honest with you. The things I remember was more um, uni. Yeah. You know, um, if there was an issue between two people, you'd have someone older come and get involved or give you a call and be like, yeah. no, you know what, you can't do that. It's not worth it. You know, mm. it was more hands-on with the older generation getting involved, Yeah, you know? Um, yeah, it was just, everyone was together, man. Everyone was together, bro. What, what school did you go? I went to, well, primary school, I went English Martyrs. Okay, where was that about? That's East Street Market. Okay, okay. You know Robert Browning? Yeah, yeah. That one's further down. Okay. Well, what was your sort of um, favorite subject in school? Boy, in school, I was, I was naughty, more, man. Yeah? I was naughty. I, I enjoyed school, but, uh, I think it was too boring. No, no PE, nothing like that? Yeah, PE was all right. He was all right, obviously, you know, ball. Yeah. I used to enjoy that. Any sport, actually, I'll be honest. So, what was the dream then? Was it to be a footballer at the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say that. Who, who's your team? Did you support? United. United. Mm-hmm. Oh, I should have bought you the other day, to be fair, but it was, it was on me. It wasn't on me. But... It's all right, bro. We've been there. We've been there. <laughs> but, right, you know. I mean... You're someone that I, I I think I met maybe when I was maybe 14, 15, I don't know, mm-hmm. maybe 14, 15 around the times, obviously with Kofi and people like that. So I always kind of knew you as someone, I think you, I think you was either a year younger or a couple of years younger, I'm not sure. Yeah, really. But I always think someone like, oh yeah, Marv, like he loves his football. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden I started hearing, yeah, Marv, oh, Marv's done, Marv's done, Marv, Marv's active. Like, Marv, like what's, so I knew you on the football side. So, mm-hmm. When was kind of the turning point for you that when you kind of, I would say, hit the roads? You know, I feel like the roads was always a part of me. Yeah. In a sense that, but then for me to um, hit the road, mm. yeah, I would say it was when I first started selling weed. Yeah. I mean, how did that even come about? One of our friends, mm. as you know, I started out with him. Okay. He's not here now. Yeah. So that's, that's what I'm gonna say. So was it at the time when, rest in peace, when he started it? So he got you involved. Round right about them times with this. Okay. You know what I mean? I'm just watching the whole because you know I wasn't on the road, but I could see everything. Yeah. So even when I'm kicking ball, I'd see man, mm. I'll see whoever doing whatever they're doing. Yeah. You get to a stage now. I, I need money. Mm. Like, everyone's looking good. Everyone's getting out. How do you afford these things? Yeah. You know. Um, so yeah, it was early teens. Mm. Start off small, you know, as you do, you're selling your drawers them days and it's got a little money in your pocket, uh, hustling. Yeah. You pound up, that was very popular. <laughs> very, very popular. Yeah. That helped man in life, mm. you know, from school dinners to 
getting new gums, mm. new parades, or whatever. You know, so yeah, I'd say about the age of 14, man. So, like, even in that time, was football still a thing for you? Was you thinking, one foot, yeah, I'm still going to play football, or was it just, you know what, yeah, I'm on the roads? You know what? I was, uh, I was trying to do both. Yeah. In the sense that our friends, most professional footballers, yeah. we could go training with them at any given mm. time. They could get us into... But at the same time, they 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 had both parents or yeah. they had a certain support structure in mm. place. You understand? Sorry. Um, so I kind of I didn't realize you have to focus on one. Yeah. Like if you if you want to be a footballer, you have to focus on being a footballer. Yeah. Wake up, train, mm. in your matches, focus. You can't mix the roles mm. with. Yeah. So I guess that's where I come to. Uh, I mean, when I, when, I, when, I, when when it comes to football, I say you're definitely from people I played with, definitely top five mm-hmm. in Suffolk. Mm-hmm. Did, did you did you know that about yourself at the time? Were you thinking one of the coldest in the ends? Not really, you know. Mm. I'll be honest with you, because you know me with this ball, I don't even really talk about it. Yeah. Bro. I don't really talk about football until people actually see me playing and they're like, right, you, you can play ball yeah. like, differently. Mm. So I didn't know when I was younger. I think that, that kind of played a part in it as well, because if I knew how good I actually was, because yeah. um, you, you, you haven't got a dad around, mm. d- d- yo, son. They're playing on them. Come take you here. We're going to train. Mum, not, mums are not really like that. Mm. They're working three times a week or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, bro. I just just had to. It was just the roads, man. What's your, what's your actual background? Nigerian. Nigerian. Okay. Omo, Omo Yoruba. Okay. You mentioned all this time I've known you for all these years. <laughs> I, I didn't even know. <laughs> I was thinking, is he Ghanaian? I one time I hear more, and I'm thinking, oh, I could be Jamaican. So imagine this is the first time I know you're actually Nigerian. Mm. That's about the Yoruba as well. Yoruba, man. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. But even I remember those times, um, obviously I see um, Ski gave me that old school DVD yeah. back in the day, and I'm watching it then. I forgot that you, you guys used to actually do sort of grime at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, when did you start spitting? Because at that time, grime wasn't really popular in South London. What, what made it you guys go into that? Do you know what it was? I went to school in Bermondsey. Yeah. So I went to school with a lot of East Londoners. Okay. They used to give me the tape packs. Mm. And I hear, well, I'm hearing some serious beats. Some ser- I'm saying, yeah, this is, and it's English. Mm. I'm saying, well, this is, man, come. That's when I'm all kind of boiled over, like, well, come mm. Spit or whatnot. And it was nerves. Mm. It was that. Remember, I'm doing grime and I'm rapping. But he's like, nah, man, you're better at grime, man. Do grime, do grime. I'm telling you, you're different. Yeah. So I said, all right, cool. Them times it was cool to do it, you're younger. And you know, as you grow up, man, you can't, mm. can't really take part in this, yeah. in, 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 in the grime. Yeah. You know, it's too much suck your mum. And, mm. yeah. I don't know. That's not really me. You know? Yo, how, how soon did you transition to rap? Was it at that time or was it much later on? Near enough, because I could, I could always do both. Mm. You understand? Obviously, I wasn't the best of rappers mm. back then, but then, you know, as years went on, you, you improve. I'm going to say, like I said, again, me knowing you beforehand, mm-hmm. it was like, yeah, Marv's a cold footballer. Mm-hmm. Then, of course, I see you're moving with nerves, you're doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. But it got to the point that where you became, like, not just food-wise, but active Mm-hmm. Sort of thing. I'm here. Oh, Marvin's doing this. Marvin's doing that. I mean, what was the mindset at the time? Was just you know what? Did someone gas you up? Because, like I said, I just knew you as a cool guy. Then yeah, I'm here with you all of that. What what, what was the the switch? Like, what made you? Because because now you, you you got food. You have to protect the food and so on. What, what was well, it? Well, that plays a part of it. But mm. If well, you know, it's, it, it, if you got food and you can't defend it, that's getting taken off of you. Yeah. Like end of. Mm. That's what it was back then. Yeah, it probably still is now that 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 will never change. Yeah. But um, I was always humble. Mm. I could have been more more gas because I had certain people around me. Yeah. You understand from generations upon generations, bro. So I had access to a lot of things. Mm. So you might hear I done something, but it would. It's not like I wanted to do it. Yeah. You understand? There'd be a conversation. The man's not listening. All right, cool. So they will deal with it like this. Mm. You understand? And that's that's all it was. Yeah. It weren't to try and get a name or none of that. Cause you still see me wheeling up and down the road. Yeah. On my pedal bike or going to the studio or whatever. Them times. So yeah, I would say it was there was people around me. They would they wouldn't gas me. Yeah. 
they would I, I never really had no one put anything in my hand and say mm. yo mm. go do that it was more like yo I, I could call someone to do yeah. that okay but I, you, you can't keep on calling people mm. you have to defend your own you understand yeah. And that's what it was, really, man. I mean, what about at home? Like, is, when his mum seen the transition? Is she saying, "Oh, this is not my son"? What, what, what's going on at home at this time? Yo, at home, it's just um, police never really come to my house. Man. Yeah, they came maybe once or twice in the older stages. Yeah, but when I was younger, they never really used to come. Mm. Like, so they were really on point, like really on point. I never used to what certain man will do, bring things to their house yeah. and police are following them, house kids, they really did. But she knew I was up to something. Yeah. And that's where the issue came because she wouldn't stand for, say if I had a little bit of money in my pocket, mm. just a little bit of money, nothing spectacular. Yeah. But I'm on me up. She wouldn't take it, she refused. Yeah. She refused, so I guess she knew what was happening. Mm. And obviously she's got friends, a lot of friends. We've got a big family, yeah. you know? So they're probably seeing man and they're letting her know. So I guess that's where that argument stemmed from. And at this point, <laughs> was you thinking of college and the education at the time? Um, college again, bro, was not really a bit of me. I, like, mm. I enjoy education, I enjoy it. But I don't feel like where I wanted to get in life, that was helping me, mm. you know? It really wasn't. As I said, one of the main things was, well, I'm hungry. We want to go out to the dance. Yeah. We want to, you know, you want to go your pro Beatles or your selfridges. Mm. Um, you got to hustle. There's man around me hustling. So I'm from Wolf Road, bro. It was easy to get near enough anything. Yeah. So of course, what am I going to do? Hustle. Try the little job thing. Didn't work, bro. Mm. It didn't work. You, you start adding up. Well, I've been here for six, seven hours. My man's talking to me like this. <laughs> my phone's ringing. Like my bridge just got. Oh no, nah, man, I'm out. Mm. You know, so that's what it was. I mean, things sort of escalated to the point where in 2007, I find myself in jail, mm -hmm. and I'm on the same wing as you. Mm -hmm. So even before we get to us being on the same wing, yeah, it's like. You went in jail for a bit of a madness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, not to go into the, the exact details, but when what went through your head at that point? Was it just a, a, like you was pissed off over something or did something that happened that was crazy? What actually put you in a position? Um, I mean, you don't mind, you, you mind me saying what? Yeah, we don't mind. We'll go, to you, you, yeah. you, you let off your shotgun. Yeah, yeah. And obviously you aiming for... Certain people, Same. but obviously an innocent bystander. Yeah. Thank God she was okay. Mm -hmm. But it was someone that we kind of knew. So I, I mean, well, yeah. what went through your head at that time? At first, I was pissed off because she was there. Yeah. So we didn't know. Mm. So I'm like, if, if there's a, because I've got a lot of female cousins or, yeah. or whatever. Um, if you see something happening, keep it moving. Mm. But that was the ignorant me. Mm. Um, going back to what you were saying about. You know, you hear Marv done this or Marv done mm. that. It was more, I was defending a friend of mine. Yeah. It wasn't actually, I didn't really have that much issues with people. Mm. You understand? I was always, yo, bro, cool, man. We'll sort it out or whatever. Mm. So that day there was another incident that took place because of defending someone. Yes. Yeah. You know? I mean, but even just you... In your head at that point, are you thinking of the consequences? No. Are you not even thinking like, oh, this could be like, oh, you just like, you know what? My friend needs my help. I'm going to back it. Yeah. I'm that. Call me. I'm going over there. Do what I'm doing. You know, you know, as you see straight red, you're not even, you don't think about consequences. Mm. You've been getting away with how much things, mm. you know, I mean, in that very same bit. Yeah. Um, if the child didn't go a certain way, I mm. would have been out, but. I thank God I'm not, I didn't get out mm. because I want to learn a lesson. Yeah. And I wouldn't have been able to see what was going on really. Mm. You know, as prisoners, that was a very good place to learn. I Why mean, not? even just looking at that point, like you said that someone's called you and you're like, yeah, it's my bedroom. Mm -hmm. That's still, that is still happening now with many of the young people now. Mm -hmm. I mean, what can change that mindset? Because some of them don't understand because 
you go out there and let's say that would have been a consequence and then a consequence that much deeper than it was mm -hmm. right now you still be in there right mm -hmm. now and then the friend you're defending would be living uh, his living life, life and and then i mean what do you think the kids are not seeing what, what did you not see at that point there's no there's no love there's no um they're not educated about how to believe in yourself mm. you know um it's a bit when you're in the hood you're blind mm. Um, you don't wear up you, you, your consequences at all, bro. You, you, you've seen about 10, 15 men go in and come out already in your teens. Mm. You're immune to that. Mm. What consequence? He comes out, he, he comes out, even goes to put in more work and goes back in and still comes back again. Mm. You understand? So, when, you, you just got to, look, it's all about the energy you put out. Yeah. If you're going to carry on running around using weapons, that's a negative energy. It's mm. only a negative outcome is going to happen. You understand? Mm. But if you was raised about positivity, like what you're doing now, there weren't people like in, your hood, in the hood when mm. what you're doing now. How many? There was none. There, was, there wasn't what, like come out and be like, when we're playing pound up on the mm. block, you come out, yo, guys, I just started a football team. Mm. Come, let's all go train. Training takes you away from a certain situation mm. or or whatever you know so um, it's, it's it's difficult but i feel like that's how the hood is designed yeah i always say when i'm reasoning with my brethren, that's how the hood's designed yeah and it's only to you take yourself out of it and you look in you like, wow. and you see what's going on in the real world mm. it's not worth it i mean what, what, what i mean once you're arrested and you're sort of charged, and you're you 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 you're, you're going to jail. Are you, are you scared? Are you thinking, oh mm. fuck, I'm done? Did you shed a tear? And I got arrested. When you get arrested, before you get arrested, every time you always meet someone. Mm. Maybe it might be a, a sexy girl or whatever. You always meet someone. When I'm in the cell, that's all I'm thinking about. Bro, I'm not even going to get to link that girl there, you know. <laughs> That's all I was thinking about, bro. That's all I was thinking I about. I know because I know exactly what you You know mean. exactly what mm. feeling it's like, bro, my God. All right. Then you get into Felton. Mm. That's reality. That's reality. Mm. That's when the fear starts creeping up, kicking in. How, how was your first night in there? First night. Um, shed a tear, definitely. Because mm. like I can remember there was a, um, quite a lot of people in the in a witness talk or whatever they mm. call it in court coming to show support yeah you understand so i just felt like i've let all these people i'm gonna get laughed off mm. finished so you're thinking i'm getting laughed off you know finished yeah you know yes it's still attempted murders bro mm. it's just it's, and obviously the previous things or whatever mm. boy did you get into prayer yeah i've always been into prayer mm. even when we was in the road before i leave my house you know what I mean? Mm. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. All prayers, mm. you know. We come from a spiritual family, you know. So we believe in prayers a lot. I mean, even to the point, I guess, and when I we bought up in film, mm -hmm. so that's my first time coming to film. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, fucking hell, like me, I'm in jail. I mean, did you even think that you know me that I'm going to be in jail? <laughs> <laughs> More, not more nah man <laughs> what you come line up the whole block pound up come mm. on man cussing each other you man are cussing each other for hours well this it was just nothing but positive vibe from mm. me even in we was in them negative places yeah. you understand so but then that's what made me know that joe is open to anyone mm. anyone you know I mean, down to the I, 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 how did you sort of cope initially with it it was like you know what i'm just gonna take you on the chin or you just kind of like praying, you know what, now nah, I'm going to bust this, you know, I'm going to... I tell you, um, I met someone before I went to jail and he told me, a random stranger in the street said to me, yeah, you're going to have police problems. Yeah. You understand? He says to me, you're going to... This was um, behind Bagel King. Yeah. Penrose. Mm. Right? Um, Car Street, you know, where the old police station yeah. is, right there. We're jumping in the car. Hey, yeah, you're going to have police problems, but you'll be all right after. <laughs> Imagine. Just three randomly. Weeks, yeah, three weeks later. Mm. I was thinking about him when I got to the cell in film. Mm. I said, this brother told me. So that kind of left my mind at ease. Okay. You know? Um, 
and then that's it. You just continue the journey, bro. Right? And what's what's did mum come up or was she like? No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was on all that. She come. And what did she say? But oh, son, do you remember they don't understand the charges mm. like that? And I'm not really trying to tell her, <laughs> yo, mum, like, because she'll tell me, um, oh, my friend saw your friend shooting the other day. Then I'm thinking, mm. now you're coming to visit me <laughs> for. I'm saying, no, nah, mum, I'm coming out, man. Trust mm. me. Which I thought I was coming out. Yeah. Because we did certain things, mm. but that didn't work, man. Once yeah. God wants you to sit down there, mm. you're not going to know. Hey, you understand? So, yeah, mum. I mean, but even while you was in there, you wasn't pretty calm in there. I had to stop you a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I think, I, I think that's my problem. I've always been that person. Like I said, I've talked about my other prison stuff always stop and fight. But when I think about it, like it was since 2007 with you, I'm trying yeah, to stop yeah. you fighting so many people. Like, yo, Marvin, now, like, like, oh, get out of the way. Get out of the way. I'm going to bang on Marvin, like, my Marvin, like. Yo, bad, bad, you know, bro. I mean, oh, yo, was, was, you just, was you just angry those days? What was yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. What, 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 what brought that anger out? I wouldn't, maybe not having a dad around. Mm. As I said, not, you, you're lost. Mm. You've got all this talent. You're sitting in jail, all um, your money situation is not right. Mm. Anger's the next thing. Someone looks at you wrong. It, you might not fight, but it's going to be confrontation. Yeah. Um, and I think being raised by a woman as well, because no offense to, mm. to, to any woman out there, but when a woman raises a man, the man tends to might pick up the, the argumentative side, mm. if that makes sense, you know. Yeah, I, 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 it I, I does. Get that, yeah. It does, you know. So I think that played a part. I mean, I mean, part. you finally got your sentence. I think it wasn't as bad as we thought it was going to be. What did you end again? Yeah, because um, we had good barristers. Mm. I bust the case originally. Yeah. Then it said retrial. Yeah. Then they, they couldn't prove the attempted murders. So yeah. my brother said to me, yeah, you get seven years. But I, I got lucky because I don't know if you recall, that's when IPP came. Yeah, yeah. IPP's come. That's, mm -hmm. that's our IPP sentence. Yeah. The judgment. They were pushing for it. Mm. The judgment, no, no, that's all right. That's cool. And as you just said that, something just dawned on me as well. The person I was stopping you from beating up mm -hmm. was the person that he was mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. yeah. shooting at that yeah. <laughs> just clocked in jail because yeah. he was also a friend of mine Yeah, and then when you think of what he ended up getting yeah, he yeah. got 30 for something else was the thing you feel like Raw. I could have been mum mm. yep. if I bust case mm. and came out that definitely would have been mum yeah million percent so, so jail in a way saves you what yo say yeah it taught me very many lessons it, it does save you it mm. keeps you safe um out of sight out of mind mm. you're not getting involved in situations that's happening on the streets mm. you understand where you imagine if you was out and them situations took place it could have been you yeah whether you was the trying to stop it or you know how it plays yeah. out you know so i'm grateful for that i mean that whole period as well like 2007 all the way through to 2010 because you was enjoying the time i was enjoying the time and there was so many people that we know that died mm -hmm. so first and foremost like you said the guy that originally brought you in sort of nerves rest in peace one of our closest and best friends yeah i mean how did you hear about that and was it your, your initial emotions or did, I, your belief i might have been was i on now when i rode on that now you did, I think you was in Owlsby at the time. Cause I spoke to you. I was in Wandsworth. I was in one of yeah, I was yeah. in Wandsworth prison. I think you was in Owlsby at the time. Oh, do you know how I knew? Someone told me on the road over weed or whatever. And then I think the person that was on his case mm. got shipped to Owlsby. Yeah. They got shipped to Owlsby. Yeah. And the screws come to, you know, like they're, oh, oh, oh. Then he got shipped straight out. Okay. You understand? He didn't even make it past him. He refused to come mm. anywhere, you know. Then I'm putting two and two together. And then obviously, you know, you got your phone, you're talking to man on the road, and then you're telling me, you're wrong. 
And there's this gone. I mean, and what was your initial, did you believe it? You're like, what's going on here? I didn't believe it because I didn't really see nerves pass in a way, bro. Mm. As mad as that sounds, you get what I'm trying to say? Mm. Because of his character, how yeah. he was as a person, mm. he wasn't bad mind or, you, you know? So I didn't, you know, sometimes you might, I, you might think, oh, this is the way he's moving, man. He's not going to last long. Mm. Did, that, I didn't get that with nerves. Yeah, he was never like You understand what I'm saying? I think, I think I think he was almost kind of too trusting. Mm -hmm. I remember going to his sister's house one time, and he had a whole I don't know like yeah, man. bare bags of weed basically like, and then just people coming in and out. I can see people watching, and mm -hmm. so he was kind of too trusting. Did you mm -hmm. think he was never kind of aware of the dangers of him publicizing and people seeing this kind of thing? Yeah, I don't think he was. Mm. I don't think he was. You know, and what sort of energies that lifestyle brings? Yeah. You don't see it, mm. bro. You know, so yeah, he was trusting. Um, what he done that day was a very trusting me because mm. you don't, we don't usually do that. Mm. That's not something you do. Yeah. You know, if, them days that you meet people, it's light, it's a certain spot. You yeah. know what I mean? If I don't know, you know, you know how do you even get the number? Yeah. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Or give it to someone else to do with that knows a man, mm. you know? So, he was definitely trusting. I used to, I used to see that a lot. Mm. And, the, and, and the funny thing is, yeah, I ended up befriending one of the person that done it without even knowing. Because mm. I wrote my books in jail. I was when I come out of jail and I thought, no, let me Google Nurse's case and I see a particular person. I'm like, raw. this guy's my bedroom in Rochester. Mad. And it's made me think that what would I have done had I known while I was in there? Mm -hmm. Cause this guy's like proper cool with me now, mm -hmm. so it's so mad. But like, not even uh, just him. Cause I think you was also um, in Alsby with Tiny Breaker, and at the time I think Deep had passed as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deep so, passed. Yeah. So I mean, <clears throat> when you're hearing all these people pass it's and the people bro. people cl close to yourself as well, like my mind as well. Mm -hmm. Like, are you thinking that I've got kind of a lucky escape being in jail? Yeah. You know? And that's what I saw in jail. Mm. Mom. That's exactly what I saw in jail. Because um, it either goes two ways when you're on the road. Mm. And there's always a bigger man for a person, yeah. you know? So that's something that stuck with me as well. I think that kept me safe. Mm. That's why I was always respectful to people. Yeah. Even if I thought you was a, if you was older than me, still straight respect. Yeah, if I mm. talk to you with your hands behind your back, mm. that's where we come from, you, know? yeah. you understand? Charity begins at home. You know, so I kept them morals, but that's the main thing. What you said there was what I thought Joe did for me. Yeah, took man out of them situations. You know, because I said before, imagine if there was an incident to take, but was it barbecues or whatever's going mm -hmm. on out there, shubs them days. You're there. Mm -hmm. You know, if, and if it's not death, it's life. Mm -hmm. And as you've done your time. Mm -hmm. And you came out. So when, when you've come out, what's the process? What's your mind frame? Like, you know what? I'm a changed man. Or, you know what? I know what I've been doing all along. I had to make money. I'm going back that route. What, what was your initial... Because people always had these plans before they come out of jail. And when they come out of mm -hmm. jail, reality hits them. Like, fuck, you know, life is hard. Mm -hmm. What was your sort of initial reaction when you got out? Um, well, we started off in wise. Yeah. Didn't really have a plan there, but it's cutting phrase said it's very hyped as well, whatever. Yeah. I still involved in parcels, mm. kicked out of there. We were Aylesbury, parcels, we're living our life or whatever we're doing. It's not until I got to adult jail mm. and I see a man from Wolf Road. And he, I always used to hear about this, you know, when you're hearing a man's name, mm. and I'm thinking, bro, you're in jail with me, I'm a different generation to you. Mm. That was another like, Oh, this is not a joke. I yeah. can't be my man's age sitting in here, bro. What's, mm. it? What's that about? Do you understand? Yeah, things happen in life, but if you've got a choice, you have to make the right ones. So I've come out of jail. I knew the police would obviously still be snooping around. Your friends are still doing whatever they're doing. Yeah. Got back into drugs. Needed to make money. Mm. I tried the job center thing. Mm -mm. Mm. 
they were asking you questions that and you just come on bro and it's taking them about an hour to waste the time remember that i'm now calculating bro in this hour do you know how much i could well we could do be doing this we could be doing whatever so a friend of mine gave me a phone as they do it's been off for a while took it went off i just ran with it and just patterned up and that kind of helped me at least have bread in my po- yeah. pocket and then be able to chill that was that was the main thing yeah if i want to take a cab somewhere all right i've got yeah if everyone's going out for food i have cool i didn't have no responsibilities then mm. so it was all right so at this time i guess <clears throat> this is when i guess you're really kind of pushing your music career you're really doing the rap thing yeah a bit of, i'll go studio but i'm, I'm on um I'm on the roads. Mm. But um, was it a conscious decision? Like, you know what, when you was in jail, like, listen, to oh, these men are doing this rap thing and the people are blowing up. They think, you know what, I'm going to come out because I've been one of the hardest. Yeah, but obviously all, all your brethren's in, in, in jail, they're yeah. telling you, like, bro, uh, make sure you rap when you come out. Like, mm. Make sure. But I'm saying to him, man, I've never been a person that wants to be famous. Mm. You understand, especially you know, like yourself, you've always been popular in school, you've always mm. been popular. You don't even want to be in the whatever's going on over there. Yeah. You understand? But I said, you know what, I'll rap, man. I'll rap and just let them hear where we come from and how it was yeah. or whatever. And that was it, really. And just. I mean, you, you, you had sort of big states that had the street buzzing and stuff. Mm-hmm. And at that point, when people are listening to you, people are sort of acclaiming you as, yeah, young Marv, young Marv, like, he's, he's the next one up. Are you feeling the love? Are you thinking, yeah, you know what, this thing might even work out, you know? Or are you like, this just a little... Yeah, remember, I'm still, I'm still in that mentality of, this is just rap. Mm. This is, the paper's not, I'm not a pop star. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm not trying to be a pop star mm. or whatever they do. So... It's, it's not adding up. It's good, but you're bait. Yeah. You're bait. The sort of music we make, we're not, you're not getting shows like that. Mm. You might come out on a one show here and there, but it's... Mm-mm. And just touching that, like, you know when people uh, want to do the rap thing mm-hmm. and they're also doing the road thing, mm-hmm. are you kind of self-snitching then? Because you're letting the police know, yeah, yeah, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. If you are really actually doing those things as well, is yeah, that, of is, course. Was that the, the, the course difficult you, you was having kind of thing? Of course. Yeah. You understand? And we see it all the time. I I, I watch the, the Americans a lot. Yeah. So I see people like the AR Rabs and all these mm. um, Casanovas. They're telling everyone what they do mm. and rapping about it. Mm. You're telling on yourself. Where the people I'm around, they don't even do music. Yeah. And they're doing God knows whatever. They don't do music. So I kind of saw that and that's what kind of kept me back as well. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. At the time, you're still on license. Uh, a murder happens. Mm. They turn up to your probation. Like, yeah, we want to talk to you. Yeah. They're trying to recall you. You're thinking, bro, I don't even know what you're... What is this? Mm. You know? But I saw what music can... It brings a certain attention on you. Yeah, yeah you feel the love, but at the same time, you also feel the hate. Mm. That's you have to get used to that, you know, social media, how we grew, social media wasn't really a, a, th- a thing like that. Yeah. You know, comments of, man, I'm adapting to this shit and I'm thinking, bro, someone don't like my tune, he's just dissing me, fam. Mm. Brother, this is a short thing, fam. And you can't, you don't even know who the person is. Yeah. You get me? So it's like, mm. I don't think music's for me, man. So at, at that point though, when you initially come out, you're sort of with the OTB camp. Mm-hmm. Like what happened with that? Because th- these were people that kind of older than, older than us that you kind of grew up with, mm-hmm. kind of thing. So where happened? Yeah, OTB is like from the ends, you know. Mm. We're always on Dodd and Grove. Yeah. Owlsby, Brandon, where, anywhere in Wolf Road, we're always there. Yeah. But my thing is, um, with this music thing, I thought, well, I might as well just fucking do it myself. Yeah. Because I'm not really, I don't like this crew mm. it's crew uh, i can do this myself uh, i believe i'm good enough and that's just how it is yeah um and you kind of just step aside so you're not involved in people's politics as well mm. you understand when you're doing your own thing that was the main thing for me 
But there's also a point there when you had the sort of little, I guess rap called I think you guys had one mixtape in the Purge. It was called with sort of Snap and mm, Chess. Yeah. I mean, how did that come about in the first place? Just that project in itself. Well, I remember everyone knows everyone or yeah. whatever. I mean, Chess is doing his thing at the time. Mm. Or just getting into music. Yeah. I'm doing music or whatever. Essence from the ends of whatever. Mm. It's in music. So there was a man that said, you know what? You managed to do a joint mixtape. Mm. Um, that was after the Terminator situation. Yeah. You know, um, that's when we decided. No, that's not when we decided to do the mixtape, but man was just like, yo, can we do a joint mixtape? I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, cool, I'm coming to the studio, let's go. I mean, yes, you, you brought it up now, so like, mm-hmm. with the Terminator situation, mm-hmm. up until I think just this year is the first time I ever seen your video in the first place. Because I okay. also saw this, this Terminator video not realizing. Why did you get on to Marvel? What, what, what did Marvel actually say? What happened? Mm-hmm. Only this year that I actually finally saw it. Yeah. God, I was trying to say, okay, I told everyone, yeah, I'm interviewing young Marvel and all the comments, ask about Terminator, ask about Terminator. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wait, what did Marvel actually even say in the first place? And it came back. I mean, when you look back at the video that you made, mm-hmm. do you think you done it correctly? And in hindsight, you think it was wrong in the way you done it? <laughs> Bits and I'm, I'm like 50 50. Yeah. To me, I was just expressing how I feel about. Um, Westwood, yeah. musician. Mm. That's all. Yeah. Nothing personal. Mm. But you, you just understand? you just feel at the time that well, he's, he's not the best. I don't even I don't even know who he is. I still yeah. you, you understand. So I'm looking at. I love music. Mm. I've always loved music. I'm always, I've been involved in music. You understand? So I'm like, well, no, that's not really. Is that what you call talent? It was kind of, you know. Mm. I said a few things in there which I maybe. But yeah. the gist of it was just that the the the, the rapping wasn't the other yeah. things don't really matter, but it, that's what was. Mm-hmm. So when you seen the response <laughs> <laughs> that has now become, I think it's come we've come folk legend. Mm. It's become sort of folk legend. I mean, when you saw the response at the time, what was your initial thoughts? And looking back now, what are your thought feelings on that now? No, what do we do? We laughed. We laughed. We obviously everyone laughed. My mm. bre- remember, my brethren's. I don't know about viral and all yeah. these internet terms mm. right so I was like well some brother's dissing you mm. so I'm looking at the video I'm like oh cool did you laugh at yourself at the time as well or did you like oh, I was just busting up we're yeah. laughing we're <laughs> laughing we're laughing and I'm like hold on a minute this brother just said I got banned from my block mm. hmm? where's he getting that information yeah. from that was all I was thinking about bro like you can diss me you can say whatever you want about me but mm. just make sure you state facts yeah or don't let no one get in your ear and say, oh, you know, because in our bit, everyone knows everyone. Mm. You understand? And the things you're saying, I'm thinking, bro, Ch- Chess is not even from War Throw, bro. Mm. I'm thinking, I was just in the studio with him the other day, bro. Yeah. So someone's obviously told you the wrong information, so yeah. you just have to laugh about it, you mm. get me? And I guess, yeah, that was just a... And with that in mind, was it feeling like, actually, what are you talking about? Hey, right, Chester, come and do this, what do you call it? Bro, you've seen it, we're... we're we done a joint mixtape mm. after. And was it was it never sort of a comeback after that sort of and like? And then it was just no one spoke about it. Did you did you? I mean, after you saw that, did you ever think, you know what? Actually, let me address this guy again, or just like, you know, it's not even worth talking about well, again. Maybe in a couple of bars, but just like using phrases of what mm. he used in his video. Yeah. And then that was it, really. But other than that, it was no nothing. Do do, do you think? you could have capitalised on that moment a bit more. Because like I said, that's gone down in sort of urban history. But I'm not a music man like that. Mm. Do you understand? I love music. Mm. Yeah, I record a lot of videos. I'm just, I'm just thinking as a marketing point of view. Like mm. If you then turn around and done a song called I Do My Job, mm. that could have set the streets on fire as well kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, of course. Was you, was you not thinking at that time? Not like, really, man. Mm. Not really, but I was saying, we're just cracking on. Yeah. Saw it from... It's what I had to see. Mm. And like, looking back at now, you still look at it and just laugh at yourself sometimes? Yeah, you have to, bro. Mm. Now, I wasn't angry in the video, yeah. you know, clearly. Could, could they, I know you're not really doing music kind of thing right now. I mean, you are kind of back into... The, you, you've been throwing a few little yeah, things out there, yeah. there, teasing. Is that something that you're going to try and just give it like... Not even like a one roll of a dice, but just, you know what? This, this, I'm still here, I'm still doing my music and I'm not here for the money because I'm comfortable but I've still got the bars. Yeah, I, think, I think you're, you're underrated. I think you just wasn't consistent. Yeah, million percent, you're right. Yeah. 
But as you know, you're doing other things in life. Yeah. You know, that's bigger than music. Mm. Much bigger than music. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to be 40 rapping mm. or standing on Instagram, taking photos, you know, yeah. that sort of life. Mm. You know, grown ass man, it's about your focus on your businesses. You I mean, as, 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 as a grown man now, <laughs> would it ever be, you know what, just for the, just for the culture, a young Marv and Terminator track? I got a song with Scorcher. Yeah. My bridging that I was in jail with. So yeah. that, that was... That's what I'm saying. I didn't even know, bro. Yeah. I didn't even know them two were bridging, bro. Yeah. But could it ever be a track with you? Why not? Hey, you're listening, Terminator, for the culture. We have to make this happen, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> we have I to make that this happen. Grand Daily, man. Call Posty as well. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah come, man. <laughs> You get me, huh? <laughs> I'm pushing for this one. No. <laughs> but like, on, on a serious note, though, like... Yeah. You're someone now uh, I've sort of... I mean, you... That's it. You've seen me at every single angle, right? Every You've single. seen me in jail. You even seen me a few years ago with my bucket yeah. outside of, as a Sainsbury's, saying donate to our football club. Hats off to you. So man. you've seen that whole journey. And at the same time, I've seen your journey because I've seen the kind of people you mix with. Even mm-hmm. under my 32 World Cup, those guys who came down and then invited me down to the yeah. sort of talk business and stuff like that. I mean, the circle you kind of move with, you, you, you decide to move yourself away from the people you kind of use to judge, what is that just the, the growth in That's you growth. and more positive people around you? Mm-hmm. And you, when you grow, it's all about protecting your energy as well. Because you're dealing with some, some big people like who, who yeah. do things behind the scene, but like very, very, mm-hmm. we, could, we could say millionaires really kind of yeah. thing. So, and even when they invited me down, I was like, oh, like these people are like, they're, they're very low key. So that's something that you sort of kind of taken on board. What I've adapted, yeah. Mm. My, my mentors, are, they're very well off I won't, I won't talk about yeah what they do so to speak maybe if we do a part two or whatever yeah. and they give me the yeah go on we'll talk about it but <laughs> you know you just said it like that that's exactly how you sound as well because <laughs> 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 they had stories for days they had me i went to the meeting yeah i think at 4 p.m i didn't mm-hmm. leave to about 10 p.m and it was just stories yeah, and stories bro. for days and they're behind you they're just they're ready for when you're mm. you know when you want to buy a football club or whatever you need extra help in hand mm. they're there they make things happen, you know, as they help me. Yeah. Um, they grew up with people like ourselves, yeah. you know, turn their life around and yeah. doing good. Um, you, 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 I guess when you grow and you attract these people mm. and you listen to what they speak about and what life really matters, that's when you realise, you know, I can't look back. Mm. You, there's no way you can look back. You always have to go forward. Yeah. You understand? Um, I have to teach my daughter. Mm. Even my little cousin, I've got loads of little cousins, bro. I have to teach them. They ring me every day. Oh, yo, how do I do this? Oh, how do I? I'm like, all right, cool. Let me speak to this person and make it happen, you know? Mm. I mean, yeah. even as, 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 as a father now, mm-hmm. as you said for yourself, you didn't have your father around. How important is it for you to be in your, in your daughter's life? Have to be. Mm. Every, no matter what. Maybe one thing I did realise when I had a daughter was money doesn't mean anything. Yeah. It's your time and how much love you give to someone, yeah. you know, and it's a beautiful blessing because there's people out there that can't have mm. children or they might have a lot, you, you know, so I'm always grateful for that. Mm. Always grateful for that. Being a father is important, bro. Always wanted to be one anyway. Yeah. I always knew I'd be one forevermore, you know. When my daughter come, huh. I said, this is what love is. No, 100%. I definitely understand. agree with that. I mean, and sort of football-wise, is it a thing that you said, because you, you always tease and say, I know, I'm, I'm coming training, or oh, I'm doing this and doing that, or you got a tournament, you're yeah, rolling. <laughs> football-wise, is it something that you just, is it just a like, part-time thing? Because we went to Oxford, which is a great experience, thank you for inviting me. Was yeah. it Oxford or Cambridge? Oxford. Oxford, yeah. Oxford, Oxford, yeah. So, but that like, football-wise, is it something that you, you you're in, in the back, cause we're pushing on now. I'm, I'm, I'm 35 like, mm-hmm. the other day. So is it a thing that where you still want to play semi pro just like a fun team? Yeah, TV, definitely. You know? I'll definitely play because... Uh, I, I think you're, you're one of the coldest. I've got the people coldest. in my ear, bro. Mm. Like, play until you, your legs give up. Yeah. You understand? And when I look at uh, maybe sportsmen like... Is it Tom Brady? Mm. Is that the baseball player? Mm. Yeah, I look at his age and I think... So, bro. That's how it's like every day, man. Mm. You, you know yourself. Um, I look at people like that still going on. Mm. And do you know who I spoke to yesterday? 
mm-hmm. and I spoke to him for a good half an hour as well. I'm not gonna get too much into what he does, but you know, I talked to Sh- Smash yesterday. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Like, I was He's telling him how him. proud I am because he, he come from where we come from. Exact same place, but look what he did. He saw everything and went on his journey. Multi-millionaire. Of course, bro. And I would just say, I told him yesterday, no, I am so proud of you. I said, I've done a video about it. I was telling him that, and he, even he was spitting game, and he kind of similar to you. And we got like, no, he's not in it for the limelight. Mm-hmm. He does what he does. He's good at what he does. And just sort of sits back and just mm-hmm. keeps helping the young generation, keeps helping That's the young it. youths. And that just tells me what I need to tell to a lot of younger people is mm-hmm. that that fast life, don't read. There's only one or two men who've cut you. You have to do the legit way and find the right sources and the right things. What will make kids understand that? What do you think will make kids actually understand that? Do we need to show more positive black people doing positive things? Yeah. Do you think, are we doing too many movies about gangsters? Are we speaking too much this, about being gangsters? What this, is it? This is it. Music as well obviously plays a part. Yeah. I mean, who capitalises off of it? Mm. Off of a young black man committing crimes and whatnot. It's yeah. a business, isn't it? So... It's either you see that business, you want to be a part of it or you don't. Mm. You know, um, uh, a cabman, I'm in the cab, Uber. He said to me, brother, he, he was Somalian. Yeah. I said, you eating Jeddah? <laughs> he said, ah, he looked at me like, how do you know? You're Nigerian, how do you know this? I mm. said, okay, I grew up with Eritreans as well, wasn't it? Yeah. So, so they eat similar. He said, brother, you know, I'm upset. When I go into black barbers, I don't see no pictures of people like yourself in there. Mm. You know, in their subconscious, if, if, if a guy's on, the, if, if a little kid's on the chair, he's nine, ten, and he keeps on going to this barber, and he sees, oh, who's that person? Yeah. And the community is promoting who you are and what you do. Yeah. That brings a certain energy. Yeah. You understand? It might not help everyone, but these are the little things. Because if you go into any other ethnic background, Moan, yeah, mm. any restaurants, anything, what should you see there? What should you see? And these things, when. Having these things, they leave it in your subconscious. Yeah. You understand? I'm mean, bigging up more black people instead of every film we watched was Boys in the Hood, Paid in Full, Menace to Society. Menace to Society, look what happens. Not enough Coach Carters. Not enough. Mm. Look what happens in the movie. It's there. They're telling you what happens. Life or death. Mm. Gone. I mean, so. What is it for you now? Like, what, 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 what motivates you? I'm, I'm assuming your daughter and your family, but what motivates you now and it helps you keep your discipline? And maybe the, this is the good friends. Mm. Um, I mean, when I first got into business, um, South End United, yeah, I was doing a little food mm. with them, right? A little contract. And that was from the good friends from our area. Yeah. You understand? So when I saw things like that, I thought, you know what? You come from wherever you come from. You're carrying on this journey, you've got a good opportunity around you. Mm. A lot of these young youths ring, bad youths ring me, bro. They stop me on the street, bro, how do we? I see them almost going to fight, I'm like, oh, let me take your number. I'm like, bro, go get a job, man. Mm. It's okay, to, it's cool to do these things. Yeah. Don't let no one tell you it's, it's not. Because a lot of people out here wearing a mask. I'm not what the jewel rappers wear. They're pretending to be something they're mm. not. Do you understand? Which is dangerous because you're now inviting all these negative yeah. situations to come in your life. Mm. When if you just be you, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Chances are you won't be involved. You won't end up in jail. Mm. Do you understand? So you, you can do it. There's just no self-belief in the community, bro. No one even thinks like this. Mm. Majority of people, should I say. We've seen the good friends that we got. As you said, Smasher is doing... That's one in how many, bro? There was a lot of man. There's a lot, there's a lot. And, and you named one man, mm. bro. And the thing is, always, like, it, 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 it saddens me as well. Like when we, you, obviously we've got the, the passing of a few and then that kilo end up getting deported. And yeah. I even, like, I, 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 I tried to send them money whenever I can. Mm-hmm. But like, things like that. And you, and, you, and you look back at the people that you, you kind of grew up with and what I need to people to understand is that although these people will kind of remain your friends mm-hmm. for life, but they're not going to be your friends for life. That makes sense. We don't, you're my friend, but we don't roll with each other every day. No, no. Schema, no. 
and Edward, they're my friends. Family. I don't remember maybe. So they're the first time I've seen them in like 13 years on my birthday party the other day, right? Mm-hmm. So it's the thing that where these kids need to understand is that, as you said at the very beginning of this interview, someone called you and said, yo, I've got an issue. They went to go and ride out, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe, I'm going to ask you, that same person, do you guys even still roll together no. now? So you would have just ended wasting your life for the cause of someone oh, else. Man, even roll with. Mm. That's the thing these kids don't understand. But any sort of last words you want to leave us with today? Any words of inspiration? Man, you know what? If you focus on your finger, you're not going to be able to see the moon. Mm. You understand? So have a bigger picture. Believe in yourself. Um, pray. T- reach out to people. Now social media has m- made it easier, yeah. I believe. Like t- especially when it comes into terms of reaching out to people. Mm. You can reach out to a man and just talk. Because sometimes that might go a long way. That little chat you have, yeah. your, your little five minutes, you know. It helps a man just propel into what he really wanted mm. to be. Instead of watching face. Because yeah. that's, yeah. And just don't have too much pride. Mm. Pride is the biggest sin. 100%. You know, so guys, that there was big ego media. We could have continued, but he come late. But we should have a part two. We should definitely yeah. have a part two. We'll Marv, that, appreciate, man. It, man. Come on, bro. Love.